What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV, and today we're going to answer a question that gets asked quite frequently. Uh, it seems like when someone's followed Island Hopper TV for a considerable amount of time, one of the questions that comes up is, hey, of all the places you have been, where would be some place that you would consider living? And of course, every time I'm asked that question, my mind goes jogging and I start thinking about all the best places that I would uh, feel at home or where I would go. A lot of places I don't think I could see myself living. Just because I visited there doesn't mean that I could see myself living there. But I'm going to give some feedback here. And the reason this is a popular subject with people, especially in the Western world or as we know it, the United States, uh, I would say is because cost of living is so expensive. And also the value that you get for that expenditure is not quite there. Thank you to everyone who's tuning in. If you guys can smash up the likes, let me know in the comments if you can hear me loud and clear so we can keep going. But I'm gonna go ahead and get into this information. So if you're anything like me, one of the reasons you like traveling out of the country is because of the value. You're gonna get uh, better experiences uh, at a much better price uh, with some different culture, which can make things very exciting. Nate, the awesome dude, 9,000. What's going on? Welcome to the chat, Nate, the awesome dude. We have 24 people watching. We've already got people smashing up the likes. So thank you to everyone who's smashing up those likes. So the way I'm going to break this down is by continent. Uh, some continents are better than others, in my opinion. Also, safety is a huge factor for me. Uh, I work remotely, so digital nomad stuff. I guess this is going to really work for people who are digital nomads. Something about me, I've been to 86 countries now. Uh, I've also thought about how this can be useful to people. I've considered doing a phone call. Uh, maybe I would charge $25 or $50 where someone can ask me a question directly and I can talk to them with one-on-one -on -one consultation, kind of like what you would pay if you had a question about legal or something and you really wanted some insider information, more so than what you get here for free with YouTube. Obviously, everything's still free, but if you wanted to actually get me on the phone, how much would it be worth for me to do a 15, 30-minute phone call, maybe $25 or, uh, you know, uh, $50 and we can talk about what you're really looking for. Uh, that was something I considered, but how much do you think that would be worth to you guys who would be interested in such a service? I wouldn't want to charge too much because if I gave wrong information, you guys would be like, he sucks. I don't like that guy. Forget about him. Um, Drag case says, were you the Bitcoin, Bitcoin guy back in the days? Yeah. All coin buzz. I used to make videos about that back in 2017. Obviously, you know, we've come a long ways. I think Bitcoin is now sitting at 70,000. So, those were, those were good days. Those were in the very beginning, but we've come a long way since then, right? So if you were investing back then and you held on to everything, you're probably sitting high on the hog. Uh, I know that, that definitely helped me uh, get to where I'm at traveling the world like it was because, you know, thankfully I didn't sell. <laughs> I was I was a naive holder. I actually thought I'd made a bad decision by holding everything, but it ended up being uh, working out for the best. Um, Drek A says, oh, cool. I remember your channel it was cool. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Welcome to Island Hopper TV. So let's go ahead and get into this information. So right now I'm in Puerto Rico. For those of you who do not know, I've been going around the Caribbean for the last three months. And I was really looking for uh, a place that really resonated with me. One thing I found here in the uh, Caribbean, it's very expensive. Uh, $500 for a minimum experience in most places. I went to like St. Martin. I went to St. Bart's. You guys have seen all the videos. If you haven't, you can go out to the channel and watch some of them. I went to Barbados. I went to St. Lucia. I went to Martinique. There's a lot of islands in the West Indies, and I didn't even do them all. I still have to go to St. Uh, Vincent. I still have to go to Ant uh, Antigua. British Virgin Islands, I've never been to. I've been to the U.S. Virgin Islands. I've been to maybe like 30 different islands in the Caribbean, but there's so many you'd be surprised. And they're not even all considered in the Caribbean because some of them are still considered Atlantic islands like Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. Those are not Caribbean islands, although we would think they are. They're actually not. They're Atlantic islands. Uh, so Same with Bermuda, but we call them the Caribbean anyway. But let's talk about this because I was really looking for places to consider making a second home because I'm a U.S. citizen. And probably the best island that I found going back on everything would still be U.S. Virgin Islands. I would say if I was to move anywhere in the Caribbean, uh, the best place that I would still consider would be uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. Maybe Dominican Republic just because it's more affordable, but, you know, it's not as safe. So that's two things that you have to take into consideration, affordability and safety. Those are like my two main things. Also, the third main thing would be 
uh, fun, entertainment. Like, do I enjoy the place? Like, can I walk around? Is it accessible to walk around and enjoy the place? And uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, I could see getting kind of boring, whereas uh, Dominican Republic, maybe not so boring. Where would I live in Dominican Republic? Well, probably Santo Domingo. That would seem like a pretty good place. I still need to go to the north over there. But that's not necessarily my favorite places in the world. I'm just giving you an idea of what I've been evaluating since I've been here. If I was to pick another island community that was just amazing, St. Bart's. St. Bart's is fantastic. I would live there if money was not an issue. That's probably the best place, although it could get boring. Uh, but it is expensive, beautiful, safe, pristine. St. Bart's, an amazing place. And I would live there uh, as a second home for sure. So St. Bart's, add that to your list. St. Martin, no thanks. I do like Anguilla. If I wanted a totally chilled out lifestyle, I could find that in Anguilla. St. Kitts doesn't have beaches. I went to St. Kitts and Nevis, Nevis, and I wasn't really blown away with that. That Barbados was too overcrowded. St. Lucia, uh, you know, it is what it is. I wouldn't necessarily consider that. Okay, so now let's move into the Latin American area or Central America and South America. My favorite country in South America as of right now is Peru for many different reasons. And I actually like the city of uh, Lima. I've been to Santiago, I've been to Rio, I've been to Cartagena, I've been to Bogota, Medellin, um, yeah, uh, Buenos Aires, Montevideo, and I still would have to say Lima, Peru, pound for pound, bang for your buck, I'm going with Peru. So would I live there? I don't know. I mean, I also went to Quito, Ecuador. Uh, that's an all right place, very affordable. Uh, uh, it, it's underrated. I would say Ecuador and Peru are probably the nicest places in South America, in my opinion. And it's safe, relatively. I would say Peru is pretty pretty safe. Drake says Peru is uh, cool indeed. Now, in Central America, Costa Rica would be probably way up there on my short list of best places to live. I would love to live in Costa Rica, and I would probably want to have a an acre or two, like a mini farm with chickens and all that stuff. When I'm ready to settle down, I could see myself doing that in a place like Costa Rica, Nicoya Peninsula, Guanacaste. I've now been to Costa Rica three times. I've spent months in Costa Rica at a time. And Costa Rica is amazing. Uh, is, if I wanted a cosmopolitan lifestyle, I'm going to find that in Panama City. Panama City has a really nice cosmopolitan lifestyle, a bit more affordable than uh, Costa Rica. It's better better than um, Coast, uh, San Jose is for cosmopolitan life. Uh, just because of the canal, it brought in a lot of economic activity. And I could probably see myself living in Panama City. We recently did a video for those of you who have ever considered going there. I do consider it a safe place. You got to, you know, in Latin America, you always kind of got to keep your head on a swivel. But relatively speaking, there's a lot of safety that can be had there in Panama City. And like I said, I've got videos on all of these on the channel if you guys wanted to go over there and check out any of these cities. I've got a Lima video. I've got a Panama City video. I've got – these are all recent videos too. Full Costa Rica travel guide. Now, moving out of that area, well, I guess I better mention El Salvador. Add that to your list. Uh, been to San Salvador, very nice place. Haven't been to Nicaragua. Haven't been to Honduras. But I did go to Belize, and I probably could see myself living uh, part-time in a place like Belize. I would say something like Key Cocker or San Pedro, probably Key Cocker. Well, Key Cocker is kind of small, honestly. So we'd have to see. It would just depend on uh, how much time I'd be willing to spend. Thank you to 17 people who smashed up the likes. Now, so out of all of the Americas, Costa Rica is number one. So we've just concluded the Americas. Uh, Costa Rica, number one target. If I'm moving over to Europe or Asia, let's do Asia first because that's probably where most of you guys are curious about. I would aim for Thailand. Thailand is on the short list with Costa Rica for like the top three, top five places in the world for me. Costa Rica, Thailand. Those are two places that are on my short list. But if I wanted to save a bit of money and live a bit more rugged, I would aim for Philippines. Uh, I would not aim for Vietnam. I don't think so. But if I did aim for Vietnam, I would go to the south, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, I could see myself living in Singapore. I would say Singapore has got to be on my short list along with Costa Rica, Thailand. Um, so Singapore is on there. That's just going to give me the all-encompassing everything I need right there. But it's a bit expensive. 
uh, and it can get boring. It's a bit small and it's okay. If I wanted a cheaper alternative to that, I would go with Kuala Lumpur, although I would take Singapore over Kuala Lumpur. But Kuala Lumpur is definitely something to add to your radar. If you're looking to save some money and you want a cosmopolitan lifestyle, that's a place that's up and coming. KL, Kuala Lumpur, add that to your list. If you're someone who's looking to do some travel or you're looking for some places to alternatively live, if you're a digital nomad, that place is up and coming for sure. Bangkok, obviously being like the hub for cosmopolitan lifestyle, I would say Phuket outside of uh, Patong is very nice. Patong is just, that's a place that's going to suck you in like a vortex. It's not a, it's the devil's playground over there. <laughs> um, Bangkok is not necessarily that bad. I mean, you could be in Sukhumvit and still stay out of trouble. Uh, although if you do a lot of nightlife, Bangkok will consume you. Uh, if you wanted to stay away from nightlife, but you wanted to dabble in it a little bit, you would probably end up aiming for a place like Krabi or Koh Samui in Thailand. Also, if you really wanted to stay out of trouble, go to Hua Hin. Uh, that's a, a lot more chilled out. Or if you wanted trouble and you're looking for a rock rock and roll lifestyle, uh, Patia Beach is where you're going to find it. Patia Beach. I mean, every night's. Uh, but it, again, it's a devil's playground. <laughs> I'm not. You know, it is what it is. People who want that, you know, that's where they'll find it. But um, uh, Hong Kong is a place I could consider living. I would not want to live in Japan. I would not want to live in Korea. The only thing that I really enjoyed about that was the bullet trains and the, um, uh, the food. The people don't speak much English over there, so I had a problem with communication. Uh, I would have to learn the language. And then even then, uh, just because of my appearance, you know, I'm going to have issues meeting people over there. Um, People are friendly, but as far as building relationships over there, I wouldn't necessarily suggest Japan or Korea for that. Uh, even in um, China, it's going to be difficult. Taiwan, it's possible. Hong Kong, it's possible. Uh, but either way, it is what it is. Um, the food in those places is great. A little bit better weather, too. But these are factors you have to take into consideration, like, you know, how are you going to be able to socialize? Well, Hong Kong is an easy place to socialize. Tokyo around maybe Shinjuku, easy place to socialize because you're but you're going to be socializing with foreigners. <laughs> you know, um, you can make friends in Thailand. You can make friends in Philippines with locals. You can make friends in Singapore with locals. But when you're in, if you go south a little bit to like Indonesia, Bali, it's an expa expatriate community. I mean, you can or an immigrant community, if you want to call it that, you know, a lot of people are having issues calling people expatriates, why not just call them immigrants? So we'll just call them immigrants or whatever, people who are, you know, travelers, digital nomads or whatever. Bali is getting expensive um, and it's getting crowded. The traffic sucks there, but it's a nice place to live. Someone said, Koh Phangan is my favorite island in Thailand. Yeah, Koh Phangan, uh, it's good. It's good. I, I, I still would prefer Koh Samui, um, but... You know, if you go there with your family, like a girlfriend or a wife, it's a really nice place to be. But if you go there as a solo traveler, you're going to get lonely in coping on, in my opinion. It's good for about two or three days. Uh, and I would not, I probably wouldn't be living down towards Hod Ren either. <laughs> but what, I, what do you like about coping on? Um, I would take Krabi over coping on. I would, I like to be in Koh Samui because of its proximity to Koh Tao and coping on, but I would not want to live full time on. Copenhagen. It, it's also a little bit dangerous there. You know, so is Koh Tao. But those are really amazing places to travel and visit, right? Now, someone said, how about Poland? Okay, so let's talk about Europe. Where in Europe could I see myself living? Now, this is a tough one. First thing that comes to mind is one of the Greek islands. Like, I just had this dream of, like, living on Eos or uh, one of the Greek islands. But, you know, I don't speak the language, so I'd have to learn Greek, and I'd I could see that dream kind of fading over time because it's islands and I've lived in Hawaii. I've had island fever uh, in Big Island. I've had island fever in Maui. Even when I lived in San Diego, you know, you have this dream. You put this thing on a mantle and you're like, oh, man, if I want to go there and live, it's just going to make my life so good. And then you go there and then like after a year, you're kind of like, I think I'm over this place. And then you realize that it's better to travel to those places than uh, live there. And that's why I've gotten this added layer to insight into where I would really want to live. 
but uh, it's because, you know, you have to take that into consideration. But Europe, Spain, uh, Spain and Greece would be places that I could post up for a short period of time. I don't necessarily know if I'd want to live in those places. I would not want to live in Ireland. I would not want to live in the UK. Just crazy mayhem, crazy chaotic, chaos. Not, not for me. Uh, the Netherlands, if I wanted to get super intellectual, I would aim for like Sweden or the Netherlands. Those are more my vibes. Uh, but even then, I don't know if I can handle that cold weather, to be honest with you. Um, the interior, like, or well, Eastern Europe, like Poland, uh, great place to visit. I like it. I would have to go back to Poland and spend a little bit more time, but I don't have negative things to say about Poland, but would I be on my short list of places to live? I don't think so. One time I had Estonia on that list just because I was trying to get into tech and I found Estonia to be a bit of a melting pot for Europe uh, and a place to make friends with other digital nomads. Estonia in particular, Tallinn. The rest of Estonia, no, but Tallinn, yes. Um, Darkay says, I don't like Thai places where it's, too mainstream and Western. Well, then you probably wouldn't like Sukhumvit in Bangkok, but I think it's got a blend of everything. It's got like a variety of foods, modern malls. It's also got culture there, uh, not too far away, but I, I can see why you wouldn't like Bangkok. I know a lot of people don't like Bangkok. I personally do like Bangkok because I like that opportunity to be able to go back and forth between Thai and then modern world, Western. I like that. I like to be able to do that. Um, Darke says, I'm from Holland. It's very expensive. Holland is extremely expensive. So is all of Scandinavia. So is all of Europe. I mean, the cheapest place in Europe may be like Poland. The Eastern Bloc is kind of cheap. Uh, maybe going down towards like the Balkans, uh, uh, you know, around like what? Montenegro. Montenegro is actually kind of cheap considering it's in Europe. Croatia kind of cheap. Uh Albania, I wouldn't even really mess with anymore. I, I, maybe if I go to the coast, I'll like Albania, but I'm not really like falling. I didn't fall in love with, uh, what's that big city there? I, uh, Tehran, Tehran, <laughs> Tirana. I, I was like, oh, yeah, it's okay. I mean, uh, it, I thought it was all right. All right. That's basically it. Portugal. Portugal, yes. I mean, some of my favorite places in Portugal, I'd imagine would be the islands, but I haven't been to uh, the Azores or... Wait, I think Cape Verde is also a part of that, or is that Spain? I don't know where Cape Verde is on that list, but Madeira Island, uh, Canary Islands. Some of those are Spain. Some of those are Portugal. But as far as Portugal mainland, uh, Lisbon was all right. It's gotten expensive over the years. I, I did like Porto, but I don't know if I'd live there. That's the thing. And the Algarve, I mean, it's, it's a hipster place. It's a place like where hipsters go. Um, Saif says, Pakistan is the cheapest country to live in the world. Pakistan is cheap. Have you been to Burma? No, I've not been to Myanmar. Um, I, every time I want to go to Myanmar or Burma, as you called it, um, I'm always, I, I always talk to someone who's Burmese, especially in Thailand. There's lots of Burmese. And I ask them, I say, is now a good time to go to uh, uh, Myanmar? And they're like, nope, nope, don't go there. Not safe. That, you know, so I always get talked out of it. But typically when that happens, you know, it's they're just basically like trying to give honest, genuine advice or feedback, but probably not as bad as they say it is or it could be as bad as they say it is. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want to be there during a SH, what do they call that? SHTF uh, situation when shit hits the fan, <laughs> that kind of situation. Uh, but you, you get the idea. But Mark says, best place to live in Mexico near beach? Oh, go to Puerto Escondido, Zihuatanejo. That's on the West Coast. Um, if you wanted to go down in the Yucatan area, I would say Playa is all right. Puerto Morales is probably better. Uh, I went down to Chetamal or down towards uh, Bacalar. Uh, I wasn't really blown away by Chetamal. I'll tell you that. I wouldn't suggest living there. That seemed like a dangerous zone right there on the border with Greece. I would just rather just go to Greece, uh, Belize at that point. I would go to uh, San Pedro or Kikakar if I'm going to go all the way down that far south. But Puerto Escondido, uh, Zihuatanejo, although Guerrero and that whole area is a bit dangerous right now. So maybe Oaxaca would be a little bit safer. 
Um, Puerto Vallarta is obviously nice. And then there's tons of places in the Baja that are just fantastic. I mean, you've got La Paz, uh, that whole area. you got Toto Santos. You go up towards Laredo. You've got Isla Santos, all those islands. There's so many different islands in the, uh, in the, in the Sea of Cortez. Those islands in the Sea of Cortez are fantastic. Thank you to 25 people who smashed up the likes. Um, someone says, Portugal or Spain, which wins? Uh, I would go with Spain. I would go with Spain because Barcelona, you've got the inland going up towards uh, Madrid. You've got the the that mountain range. I forget the mountain range that's up there on the border with France. There's also a small country there. I can't remember the name of the country. Someone help me in the comments. Uh, but also you've got those islands. There's plenty of islands. Um, I, I would say, uh, what is it? Not Madeira. Um, Mallorca. Mallorca is an awesome place. Yes, Andorra, exactly. Andorra, there's a beautiful place up there. Um, I, fl- I have only flown over there, but when I flew over it, I was like, whoa, I need to go there one day, you know, because I was flying from uh, Paris to Barcelona. Uh, someone said Pyrenees Mountains. Yeah, that's what they're called, Pyrenees. Now, another place that's on my short list. So, so far, my short list, as we're going along here, you're seeing I'm building a short list for you guys. So far, we've got Costa Rica. Thailand, Singapore. Okay. Next one is going to be Dubai. But if I wanted an alternative to Dubai, I would be looking at uh, Doha, Qatar. Now, Doha is the metro area, but it's a lot more than uh, Doha. They've got Lucelle, and that is just like Dubai was 10 years ago. So if you wanted to grow and emerge into a booming place, Qatar is it. Here's the reason Qatar is more wealthy than. Uh, United Arab Emirates. They've got a modern, efficient uh, metro system, and it's a, it's a growing country. 300,000 of those people are locals, like indigenous, like native people to that land. And the rest, the majority of the people that are there are all foreigners. They're just like you, just like me, just like someone else, just from Russia, from Philippines, from Indonesia, from Europe, from Africa, from all these different places around the world. So it's really a melting pot of people. It's not just an Arabic country. Even though it is an Arabic-run country, it's not an Arabic country in terms of population. You still have a lot of people that are Arabic there. It, what I'm, so what I'm saying is it's actually more liberated and open and uh, free than most people think. Most people think, oh, it's not freedom. It, it's strict Sharia law and everything like that. They do have strict rules there, but it's a pretty open society, more so than I ever thought. Because when I was going there, I was reading things online. I wasn't sure. But um, Dubai is the same way. Now, I haven't heard the same thing about Oman. I heard you have to be a little bit more careful in Oman. So someone said, do I need to rent a car in Costa Rica? Absolutely. You do need to rent a car in Costa Rica. And it's going to cost you about $75 to $80 a day. And you should probably get the insurance. Uh, Just be careful trafficking anything that you shouldn't be like, uh, you know, the green plant. Because sometimes they do traffic stops and they're looking for that. And I don't know why they're looking for that in particular. Uh, above all else, but that's what they're looking for. And so, you know, it is what it is. What are the average price range to buy in these places? Well, I would say before you even talk about buying, you should talk about renting um, or living short term because you don't want to just dive in head first buying something. And then, you know, after six months to a year being stuck with something that you own, that you haven't really fully fallen in love with or experienced for a long period of time. But hands down, it's going to be Thailand on that short list. You can find some affordable stuff in the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica. Uh, It's possible to maybe find some deals in Dubai. The deals in Dubai seem to be passing by. You could probably find better deals in Doha. Um, I'm telling you guys, if you haven't been to Doha, you should consider it and you should really consider going there. We also did a video on this channel about things to do in Doha. You can check it out. I'm telling you the truth. Doha is up and coming. There's a few places that are up and coming. And that one, Kuala Lumpur, like I said, those are up and coming places. I still go with Dubai. I would take Dubai over Abu Dhabi also. But uh, if you've never been to Dubai or that part of the world, you should go. And go there with an open heart, open mind, and you'll see. You'll be blown away. You will be like, wow, what have I been missing out on? Now, if you go to... um, more parts of the Middle East that have caught my attention that I need to start exploring. It's going to be places like um, Uzbekistan. 
I'm not necessarily recommending to live there, but these are places that I need to start exploring. I've been to India. I would not want to live in India, I don't think. Although there are some things about India that I really do like. I think the people are extremely friendly and I think the food is really good. Uh, the infrastructure is not so good though. Um, some people like to say that India's got great infrastructure, but I'm here to tell you, not really. <laughs> uh, if you're going to ride a train in India, it's going to be a tough, tough situation. They've got some really nice hotels though. They've got good quality hotels. Uh, the food is what really pulls me into India. The people being really friendly too. I mean, you're not going to find th that kind of friendly people in every country in the world. I mean, the friendliest people uh, are typically in Asia, to be honest with you. Hi, everyone at work, but stopping by to say hi. What's going on, Firefly? I haven't seen or heard from you guys for a while. Hey, Salvador, what's going on? So Bora Bora? No, that's got to be expensive. I've never been to Bora Bora or French Polynesia but um, I'm looking for the best islands. So far, the best islands, my goodness, Philippines. But, um, oh, wow, I'm, I'm island hopper. I mean, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find the best islands. That's my like life goal is to find the best islands. That's why I've been island hopping the West Indies here. That's why I go around island hopping to the Philippines. I mean, I went to, what, 13 countries, 13 islands in the Philippines, I've been to almost every island in Thailand except for like two or three. I've never been to Koh Lipe, and I've never been to the one off the coast uh, north of Phuket. I've been to Phuket, but not the the one that's off the coast uh, a bit, a little further north. I forgot the name of it. But I, I've never been to Koh Lanta either or Koh Kud. So there's a lot of islands in Thailand. But um, I've only been to like, I guess, 10 or 12 in Thailand at this point. But um, I would say that... Thailand seems to be uh, still the best bang for your buck. You can also find good deals in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, El Salvador definitely has a lot to offer. I mean, it's just going to depend on what you're looking for. Do you want cosmopolitan life? Do you want to have access to modernity? If so, Doha, Dubai, Singapore, Hong Kong. Those are places where the world comes to you. The world just is at your fingertips. Macau, but no, I would not live in Macau. I'd live in Hong Kong. Macau could be, it just seems like Macau was going in that direction where I'd want to live in Macau, uh, at least when I first went there in 2014, 2015. But then Macau kind of changed and it became less of what I was looking for. I, can't, I think, to be honest with you, it became more like China. It became more like China than Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is even now becoming more like Hong or China than Hong Kong. So, Old Hong Kong's now turning into China. And China's more of this, like, if you're not Chinese, get out of the way kind of experience. It is what it is. I mean, you know, we can we can get into all these reasons about, you know, why that is or what it is. But um, it's just not as welcoming to foreigners. Uh, some people would use the word xenophobic. I'm not going to say that it's that bad. I mean, they're still friendly. There's The food's tremendous. And uh, I always love Chinese food. And I still come across very friendly people, but you still get this underlying tone or vibe that, you know, if you're a foreigner, it's kind of like, well, what are you really doing here? What are you really doing here? This is a Chinese country. You know, it's like that. Um, Mongu says, I heard Philippines gets hurricanes, which could be a drag. Well, so they're called typhoons. Yeah. Boracay or Cebu or Bohol, which is the first time in the Philippines. Well, so Palawan is the one that doesn't really get typhoons because if you look at how the typhoons come, they usually go through Visaya or they come through Mindanao or they come through uh, Luzon in the north. Visaya is the islands in the middle, like uh, Cebu and Bohol, like you're talking about. There's different dialects, too, in Philippines. So, like, if someone speaks Tagalog, they're from the north. If someone speaks Visaya, they're from the middle, which is those islands in the middle that you're talking about, like Negros, uh, all those islands. I mean, we could go into a whole uh, video about explaining how the Philippines is set up. And then you have south, you have uh, Mindanao. And they're all three like different regions. It's kind of like someone from New York, someone from the Midwest, and someone from the Deep South. <laughs> they're all like different personalities, right? So you have that kind of thing. But Palawan is kind of like in a league of its own. It's kind of like different than all of those three. I wouldn't consider it part of Mindanao. I wouldn't consider it part of Visaya. And I definitely wouldn't consider it part of Lusan. But it's tucked away. And in order for a typhoon to actually hit, Palawan, it would have to be like it would have to like wrap around and do something it never does, which has come from the from the bottom. So what I'm saying is when a, a typhoon or a hurricane goes over those islands, 
the mountains kind of break it up the the clouds and the velocity kind of like what happens in in hawaii when a hurricane arrives at mauna kea or mauna loa it just gets shredded because the mountains just rip it apart the system can't hang on um fireplace firefly says being welcomed is important to me yeah you'll get welcomed in places like the philippines you'll get welcomed in places like thailand you'll get welcomed in bali not necessarily all of indonesia but definitely bali you'll get welcomed in you could say Dubai and Doha. They they act like they want tourism, right? They have the, you have this feeling that there's tu- tourists are welcome. Dominican Republic, I feel like tourists are welcome. Uh, there are some places that are getting so much tourism, they're getting to a point where they're going to be able to pick and choose who they want to let in. So the barriers to entry are going to um, get higher, and that's actually something that's happening a lot. In in particular, I would say Thailand. Thailand's just getting an influx of tourism. I think it's the number one most visited country in the world now. Uh, even in the EU, they've made it more difficult for Americans. It's still easy to get to the EU. And once you're in the EU, you've got six months to explore and you're good. But now you've got to go online and fill out a form that you didn't used to have to fill out before. Someone said Australia. Oh, that's a great one. Okay. So I haven't even really touched on Australia. So obviously for me, I would aim for the Gold Coast or Perth. I could live in Sydney and I could live in Melbourne. I guess you could say I could live in Adelaide or Tasmania, but honestly, Gold Coast is good enough for me. That would be Brisbane, Gold Coast. Seem like that's a nice cosmopolitan area. Sydney and Melbourne get a little bit too cold for me. So does Adelaide. Perth is great. It's just, it's so far away from everything else. I mean, you're not close to anything when you're in Perth. I mean, the closest you are to anything is Margaret's River. (laughs) Now, New Zealand that would be a place that used to be on my short list for sure. It's just a bit expensive, but New Zealand has some positive attributes that could put it up back on the short list. So far, my short list is what? Costa Rica, Thailand, uh, Dubai, and uh, what was the other one? I, I, it, it seemed to have evaded me. Was it Philippines? Singapore. That's right. <laughs> I was like, wow, I better write that stuff down. But uh, Philippines could be on the short list, but Australia, New Zealand, those have been on my short list before, although it's been a while since I've been there. Before COVID, I I have not been back. Um, Someone says, I'm looking to get 200 acres in northern Maine. Life is good. You the man, Jeff. Keep up the great work. Love your channel. 200 acres in northern Maine. Wow. Is that Presque Isle by New Brunswick? My aunt used to live in... uh, Presque Isle, and we went to New Brunswick. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you guys can tell me what you guys prefer, but someone says you can retire in Sri Lanka for $400 a month. I've never been to Sri Lanka. That'll be like country number like 87 for me. I think it's coming up. That in the Maldives, also French Polynesia, maybe getting over to Madagascar, doing a lot of Africa, like going to Tanzania. I mean, Africa is a place I really need to explore. Um, I've, everyone that's ever been to Africa has always given positive reviews. I don't think I've ever met someone who went to Africa and was like, don't go there. Have you? I mean, really? I mean, we're talking about people who love Africa so much, they just keep going back and back and back. Like, there's a lot of positive reviews I get. They say it's just the vibes, the people, the the community, the way it feels. It's always the way it feels. There's something about the way it feels. Mongo says, how about Argentina or Chile? I would take Chile over Argentina. Um I went there in the winter time. I wasn't blown away by any of it. And it's gotten dangerous down there in Chile in particular. Like when I was down in Peru, I was thinking about going down there, but I went on the U.S. State Department website. It was level three, level three, do not travel. (laughs) So I was like, whoa, what's going on down there? Uh, And people in Peru were telling me that. That's how I actually knew about it. But people were telling me, don't go to Ecuador. People were saying, don't go to uh, Peru because of protests and all this. But the the State Department didn't have a level three for either of those. They had level twos. Whereas with Chile, they had a level three. And I was like, that's funny because last time I was in Chile, I felt like that was the safest of all of the places. But then again, I went to that. uh, I I don't even remember the name of it. Uh, It's there's like a really safe neighborhood in Santiago. I mean, I forget. I've been to so many places. I forget some of the places inside of those countries. I've been I just have visual memories of it. Argentina is safe. Uh, Argentina is safe, though. was just there way safer than U.S. cities. Yeah, Buenos Aires was 
really safe. There was one area in Buenos Aires where I was walking around and I had a camera and the police officer was like, hey, put that away. I would I would recommend you get out of here. I was like, oh, whoa. So once you hear that from a police officer, you're like, whoa, OK. I also heard that in Quito, Ecuador, a police officer on a motorcycle just drives by me. I thought he was like, I was like, did I do something wrong? He's like, starts telling me something. He's like, habla espanol. I was like, no, uh, poquito espanol. And he's like, uh, solo ingles. He's like, he's like, be careful around here. It's dangerous. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but I, I don't know. I've heard that in Brazil also. You know, it's something you definitely don't take lightly when the locals or local law enforcement tells you that. But I had that happen in Buenos Aires. I will say that. Probably the safest place, I guess, was Montevideo, uh, Uruguay. I felt as though that was just a, a safe place. Kind of boring, though. Not much going on there. They have, like, the the coastline. They have, like, this coastal town uh, that seems all right. Um, so we'll see. But either way, I just wanted to make this video. Thanks to everyone who smashed up the likes, tuning into these chat, tuning in these live feeds. If you guys want to tune into more of these, you have some more questions, let me know. Hopefully this explains my short list of where I would want to live and where I would go. But there's a lot more I could say on this subject. Uh, and if you guys had more I information you wanted from me, and you guys are interested in that idea of jumping on a phone call with me for $25 or $50, whatever we decide, uh, I, I would be open to you know giving some one-on-one -on -one consultation and providing that information to people at a one-on-one -on -one level, kind of like what you would get if you called you know, Legal Shield or something like that, just someone to bounce ideas off of telling me exactly what it is you're looking for. So we'll see. Uh, David in Panama. That's just south of Costa Rica. I never actually went to David. Uh, H says, love this channel. Oh, that's good. Thank you. But yes, thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you on the next one.